Hey, how you doing? You doing all right? Hopefully you've been good. Hopefully you've been productive. Maybe no one's asked you that hour ball today. Yoink. I have a hair on my eyes. <laughs> how you doing? <laughs> but uh, maybe you haven't been productive. You haven't had a good day. You have this constant social anxiety, this fear that you're going to be left out of the group. And then you get to the point where you realize you don't have particularly great friends and you want to go in this whole sort of like villain arc thing and you st just want to go and go on self-improvement and lone wolf everything. But there's one greatest fear and that is you're a terrified of being alone. And this is how, from my own experience from being on self-improvement for nearly two years now, how I learned to love being alone and how you can as well. My name is Wada and I help other young men like me take back control of their lives. See, I want to tell you a story. I want to tell you a story about how when I first started going on self-improvement, the reason why I went on self-improvement literally two years ago, I was in college and I didn't I didn't even finish college. I left college because I didn't I had good I had a good group of friends and we used to do a lot of things together, but as time went on, as normal friend groups split away, split apart. And uh, maybe this is one of your greatest fears, being excluded from the group completely. And uh, that was something that I basically realized that I wasn't being included, but though that friend group they were good people, but they didn't care about my well-being. They weren't particularly a good group of people. They kind of, uh, they didn't look down upon self-improvement, but they didn't, they definitely weren't like upbeat of it either. So I left college. I just left and that was my reason. I just didn't enjoy it. I knew I didn't have a group, good group of friends and I just left. That friend group made me feel alone, but after being on self-improvement, you're probably thinking, oh, well, I'm on self-improvement. I'm gonna, I'm gonna become super attractive. I'm gonna start making loads of different, different kinds of friends. I'm gonna have so much confidence because I'm on self-improvement. Yeah, I'm gonna drop some ugly information, some ugly truthful information that you're not gonna like. Even on self-improvement, and I've been on it for nearly two years now, almost over a year, almost the whole period, I was still alone. I was still alone, but it wasn't, a bad thing. Because whilst on self-improvement, I became so focused on improving every aspect of my life that I had neglected, that I had completely disregarded by just being so addicted to technology, instant gratification, just absolutely destroying my mental health and not taking care of my like physical health and not even attempting to improve my financial health. I was neglecting this for years upon years, so I had so much to improve upon. And when I had two years to focus on this, on just improving myself, every aspect of my life. It was great. I, I became in love with it. I started enjoying it hugely. I was never bored. Despite being completely alone, I basically, at the time, I didn't have many friends. I had work colleagues and they were good people. Um, this was before you. <laughs> you were chill out, you were chill. But I was never bored. I was constantly thinking about the next task. Okay, what else can I improve myself? I've started going to the gym. Okay, what else? Oh, I, I'm, I'm spending a lot of money for like healthier food, uh, the gym membership. So maybe I'm gonna start focusing on my financial health to try and improve my financial situation. Oh, but now I've neglected my mental health. I'm gonna start improving this. I was always thinking about the next task. I was never bored and I enjoyed every single goddamn minute being alone. Despite not having that social company and the thing is it won't stay like that forever the progress i made just being by myself focusing on myself the progress you make in your business in your in your financial side of things and like your mental health and your physical health you make a huge ton of progress but you neglect the social aspect and the social aspect despite being alone yes i learned to love being alone but the social aspect is nice it's important the social aspect is still a part of self-improvement and I'm here now, nearly the end of two years of being on self-improvement, and I have people like this, people who are behind me down there, who I've met on my self-improvement journey, who are also people on their own self-improvement journey. I mean, you're you're on self-improvement now, and uh, do you know how long it's been? Well, not just because I stopped smoking, it's a year and a half, or maybe a bit more. Yeah. So so he's he's quit like all the addictions that people give into nowadays weed alcohol he's quit all that and he's been on this for a year and a half something like that you don't know you haven't been counting obviously count. if you, yeah if, yeah when you when sorry when you start to count the amount of time that you haven't been on addiction it's basically like the same thing as being on addiction if you're counting scratching away the days on your wall that you haven't smoked weed or played video games or wanked off whatever it is it's basically the same thing as being as addicted yeah exactly because why are you counting 
Why are you counting? You're counting down to, what, tell people that this is how many days you lasted before you failed again? You're inevitably counting down until you fail. So if you have the mindset that you're basically, it's just part of your lifestyle, it's part of your identity, you will never fail, you will always be consistent. And that's the thing, I met someone who has been on self-improvement nearly the, basically the same time amount of time I have. And I didn't know him before. I've met him at near, like, what well, we've started doing a bunch of stuff, like, what was it, like, the past couple of months? Yeah. Um, yeah, and that's near the end, like, the, the end bit of my self-improvement journey. Obviously, I've not finished, but, like, near towards the end that I've met people who are like-minded like me. I left that group of friends who weren't, who made me feel alone, and I continued to stay alone on self-improvement, but I learned to love being alone, to enjoy making progress. And eventually I met people who were also on that same journey, who were also making that progress and enjoyed it. The path you choose in life, you will meet other people on the same path. It just depends what you wanna choose. Are you gonna to choose to self-better yourself to become the best version of you for your future family? Or are you gonna be the kind of guy who's managed to pull a wife, but has the shittiest family possible, who's got an unhappy family, or maybe the guy who stays alone for basically the rest of your life, sat inside in your mother's basement, uh, playing video games. Who do you want to be? Obviously the guy who's actually improved his life. If you like this video and this video helped you out, click on the one in the corner, because this will most definitely change your life as well. Stay consistent and do the best you can. You know what time it is? Self-improvement kids. <laughs> Mwah! Mwah! Oh fuck, that was shit. Mwah! There we go. Mwah! <laughs> Mwah! <laughs>